I know y'all missed us. I know y'all missed these ugly gingers up on this show. Hey, I'm like three sixteenths ginger. You're sixteenth sixteenth. Hey. <laughs> hey, so listen. I had to do math. Yeah. I was like, shit. <laughs> I was like, damn, that means I'm like one ginger. Yeah. <laughs> hey, All so right, listen. Then. We asked I've shit. been drinking. Yeah. Wallamel. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we had we had some shit going on. Uh, Troy traveling. Troy has been traveling. I've been doing a little racing. A little racing. Yeah. Where at? Wisconsin. Oh, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Ohio. Oh yeah. So he's been to Wisconsin, been Ohio, Pennsylvania. I've been right here in good old Polk County. I ain't won shit. <laughs> you want some poll awards? Oh yeah, it's a quick time. I'm a hang data, on, hang, hang data on. cassette poll. Hang on, don't say. Well, what does that pay? Because I saw you with the trophy check. Oh, that that last poll paid five hundred. There you go. <laughs> that was all right. There you go. Hey, I, I didn't even mean to. No, that, that was good. I was still trying to qualify third or fourth, but uh, no, we've been racing. Uh, and then he got some shit on his arm here. Yeah, I had arm aids. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, I was wrestling my kid. Got infected. And I got elvatitis of the arm. <laughs> Uh, but you know, can nobody hold me down? Yeah. So, uh, here we are back again and I know it's been a while, but I promise y'all, as y'all saw in the intro, this one's going to be a doozy. I think it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a doozy because we have one Mr. Herm, Hermanator, Herman, Mr. One Kenny Wallace coming up here in just a few minutes. And I can promise you he's on. Oh, yeah. No, like, there, there's cats who are on. They're like, hey, man, you know, take it to 110%. Like, yeah. Like, Kenny can back it down to 110%. Yeah. Like, I, I had the pleasure of working with him, racing with him, and, and just hanging out with him, just like damn Applebee's. Mm-hmm. And, and the dude is 200. Like, he's both feet on the throttle all the time. Like, like when people are like, oh, it's like, let's see his videos. and his Like, no, that's him. That's, yeah. As far as I know, like that's it. I don't know if he goes home and decompresses and like loses his shit. But when I see him, that dude's on. He's on the chip. On it. And I lo- never seen him not smiling. I, I never. He is, he's pimping joy. He is straight pimping some joy. Oh, yeah. It's, kind it's, of, a, it's a Bobby Bones. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, he's, he's always. I'm not uh, hip on the kids. Shit. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I seen some hats. But uh, yeah, no, he's always. Uh, Happy go lucky kind of guy. Uh, I, I look forward to his interview too, a lot like we did Shane and, and it, even Nassie, like or Kyle Bronson surprises. Dang, dang on duct tape. <laughs> Kyle Bronson surprises. Like I don't. This could go a few different ways. Like it yeah. could. I mean, it really could. But I mean, I expect him. He's probably going to carry the show. Yeah. I mean, we. He got a little warm up on Dale Jr. download, so now he's ready. So we brought him on. On bench race. Yeah, see, so so now I got to tweet. I'm going to have to tweet Dale Jr. and Mike Davis tomorrow and let them know that, that now their show is so part ours. Not, because it's a setup show. Yeah. So we appreciate that. So, basic, so basically. Uh, what was the other guy? Mike Davis. Oh, see, I don't even know him. Yeah, he, he's Jr.'s like handler type uh, deal. Oh, okay. So, so basically, so, you go on Dale Jr. download. That, that's a testing tune. You rented the track for the day. Yeah, hey. Scuff some tires. Yeah. And then when you're ready, you throw down on bench racing. Exactly. That's how it goes. And y'all need to let Dell Jr. know because I'll let him know. Hey. And, hey, I don't know if he'll see my tweet, but I'll damn sure send it. But <laughs> So, listen, as always, we got a shout out because there's a couple guys that give us gas money and do this, and they buy this. And you know what? I'm done with the koozie. I'm drinking Bush Light. He went hey, straight Caitlin Larson on it. Uh, hey, exactly. You know what? He's and just po- out there. Possible next guest. <laughs> Possible next guest. Hey, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to Snapchat. Oh, Caitlin, tell her again. Let's hop on. Yeah. Hey, look. So listen. You know, we were saying, oh, they don't sponsor us. I'm not gonna show what we're drinking. But you know what? Piss on that. We. You know what? Damn it. Hey, holler at us, Bush Light. Hey, come on. Hey, holler at us. Look, man. You know. I'm a Bush Light guy. I drink Bush Light. Like, I pimp your shit out on this show starting today. Mm-hmm. Because for the first, like, 10 episodes, 
you know, I was trying to hide it, you know, and I wasn't really being myself. I didn't like who I became on the camera because, <laughs> you know, I really didn't feel like I was being myself. And That's right. so I took the koozie off and I'm here. I'm real. This beer is real. That label is real. It's Bush Light. <laughs> Give me a sponsorship, baby. Let's go. I'm, I'm 10% coupon. Oh, 10%. I mean, yeah, we're fine with whatever. <laughs> so, um, but uh, this first segment cannot be brought to you by the gas money and the pizza and the, we tried to get some wing street wings, pizza hut were really vibing with us. They told us like a 50 minute delivery time. And we basically told them where they could stick that delivery time. So uh, here we are. Uh, segment one episode. I believe this is 11. Steve Kinzer. Well, Steve Kinzer right here, but you know, Walter. you know what Ricky Bobby said? You can't have two first place. That just makes 11. <laughs> So here we are, episode 11, and as always, it is brought to you by Rage Bull Racing Engine. And I tell you what, Troy, I ran a Rage Bull Racing Engine last weekend. Oh, well, that's convenient. They ain't gave me shit. Well, see, what happened was, I'm not, I, I'm not traveling. Like, I'm not traveling, Troy, to care. Oh. I'm local Brian Danforth. So I think you just, did you slide me from my, from my free engine? Uh, yes, I did. Slide job. I did. I, I slide job you. I pulled a mean Son slider on you. Bitch. So I had a free engine deal lined up for the first time in my life. So basically what I did, I strapped a raging bull to my Phantom Recon last weekend at Fruitland Park. And I tell you what, we fired Brandon came. Are to you me. getting paid by everybody now? You're just marking out. You're just saying all kind of Phantom Recon. He's like, I put a, I put the Raging Bull on my Phantom Recon. Hey, it felt real good on my Vegas. Like, uh, shout out, shout out, Harold Wiggins. I appreciate the uh, the Cash App deal that you sent me today. Yeah. But um, so I can't. I was about my dad was about to fire me up on the grid, and Brandon said, "You know everything good." I said, "Yeah, man, it's good. Like I, I'm ready to go for practice." And my dad fired it up, and I hit the gas, and son of a bitch, I had to go buy a bigger neck brace. My Simpson neck brace just wasn't going to do it no more because my neck snapped so hard. I mean, shit, I, was, I almost went and got a damn Hans device put on. My damn neck went backwards. That thing has some torque, baby. So, rageable racing engines. So if, you need, if you need prep by Donnie Nall, if you need motors, whatever you need, give them a call at 863-944. Four two, one four. I think I finally memorized it. I don't got no notes here. All I got is what button is what. And guess what? Guess what? If the number is wrong, y'all still know that you can find Rageable Racing Engines on Facebook, and it's gonna be right here because I'm pointing down. We got a JPEG floating right there right now. But even if the phone number was wrong, you know what you can do? And he can kiss my dick. That's what I say. That's what I say. Shout out Jack Hewitt. Oh, I'll see you at the Golden Gate Speedway Memorial here. This is soon. why we can't do the intro last. This what? is it right here. <laughs> hey, but I just want to let you know we we film segments, and, and we just is, started doing that. And and now this is the intro. La this is actually the most sauced up part of the show. <laughs> so that's why he gets where slapping the table, kissing dicks, and talking shit like that's it. So. Roll into Kenny Wallace, man. Like, this is messed up. Hey, guess what? We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back, and y'all are going to hear myself and Traveling Troy with one Mr. Kenny Wallace, driver of the number eight, the number eight, Red Dog, Ford Thunderbird, and also the 55 Square D to push Dale Sr. to his last win. I th I think he, well, he was 81. No, it was 55 when he pushed him. Oh, all right. And uh, also, winner at Volusia in the Bush race when the track tore apart. I bet you didn't know that. I believe it was 1991, but we're going to go to break and research that. <laughs> we'll be back real quick with the Herminator on the line. Okay. Um, how is it backwards? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. So cool, man. You finished that pizza over there? <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So we have got him lined up. I'm about to call him. I hope he answers. 
He might be a little bit. You always hope they answer. We always hope they answer, but they, they, they usually do. I just don't want to let the people of Bench Racing down. Our loyal followers, since we ain't done a show in a little while. It's been a minute. And here they are. They're back watching because we got one Mr. Kenny Wallace lined up. Let me see. Terminator. The Terminator. Captain Insano. Ain't that what it is? He got a little book series he's got out now or something? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to uh, call him up and hopefully we got the Bluetooth deal working. Is so, it ringing? No, I'm about to call him. So it should work. We well, work press on the, play, on man, the or test. whatever. All right. Here we go. Oh, it sounds good. I probably should have told him he's calling from 863. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Hello. Is this one the Mr. Herminator? Ladies and gentlemen, he is the Missouri hot shoe out of St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> I love it. I love Dude, he it. He does his it's own me. intro. That's when you become a badass. You can do your own intro. <laughs> Well, now, so here's how, here's how that intro started. I was up in Kakana, Wisconsin, oh, years ago, and I, they, they had me listed, you know, in the lineup as the Missouri hot shoe. I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> I said, me? me? <laughs> they don't even know it's the Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> Missouri hot yeah. shoe. Well, yeah. Well, let's it, talk. It, but since, it, it, since we're talking about that, though, let's. this is the perfect way to start this here. Yeah. Like, so... For the people who don't know me and Brian, especially, where did Herman come from? Because we did a whole episode on nicknames, on badass nicknames. And where did Herman come from? Herman came from a guy named Bob Miller. Bob was a local promoter here in St. Louis, and he was a race car driver before he was a promoter. He was a he was a German man. He was he was, he was not fat. He was big and. Uh, <laughs> He he knew that I was in the grandstand fighting everybody because my dad won all the time and, and the fans most of them didn't like us and uh, he said he said uh, he called me Herman the German he said Herman the German's up in the grandstand fighting again and come to find out because Bob was a big German man uh, there was a medieval warrior I come to find out like well, why did he name me well he's gone now but. So he named me Herman the German, then it, then it became Herman, and it, he was like a 1670s warrior. And uh, so anyway, I got a couple bobbleheads of uh, <laughs> the real Herman the German. That's like the great, yeah. I, that, that had, I had no idea where that was going, and that is exactly the story I expected. Yeah, I always thought it was like your nick, or like your middle name or something, like Kenny Herman Wallace or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, or just you know, like when, when, when I when, when I got my nickname from from David Steele, like it was just because he couldn't have anything else to call me, yeah. Like because he called me Numbs, which was short for Numb Nuts. He'd be like, "Hey Numbs, get over here." And I was just thought like maybe that's how yours came. He's like, you know, people can't remember your name or well, something when you're younger. You know, I'm taking I'm taking a guess. He nicknamed you that because you're the only one that had enough balls to run with him. Uh, you're, you're 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 a great race car driver. Well, but, I appreciate you know, that. The, and, well, you really are. You know, it shocks me that you, you're not in a cup ride and your, your talent is off the charts. And it does amaze me. You know, there are you know some drivers out there that you know are incredibly talented, like you. Not very many, but uh, you know, you're a good man. Well, and, I thought uh, about I thought about you know they always got these like diversity programs and stuff. And I thought about starting, there should be a diversity deal for just poor folk, you know, <laughs> just like, like, Hey, you I know what? I, my, my nephew, for instance, I feel like that kid can wheel. And I'm like, he needs to be in there. I mean, he's not, I thought about naming him Juan Pablo D care or something, <laughs> you know, trying to sneak him in. But like, I was just like, I don't know. Maybe we are not in the majority there. He's, he's a little broke kid. So we need to, we need to <laughs> give him a look, you know, I love, love, I love this story because I can relate in so many ways. I grew up, true story now, and I'm not going to get serious on you, but, you know, I, I grew up so under middle class. My dad and mom, they worked hard. Me and, and my brother, Rusty Wallace, and Max, we were redness. I mean, we're trading soda bottles to get money to go race. And then when we made it, when, you know, we're very fortunate to make it. Now my friends give me crap that I made it. I'm like, you know, so... 
don't you understand that I was, I was broke ass, you know? And, uh, oh, but dude. You're right. Yeah, we, we got all these diversity programs. We, I agree with you. <laughs> you're making me laugh. Diversity but, program for poor broke ass. Yeah, yeah I, mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I get it. We need women. We need people of other ethnicities. Like, we need all that. But we also need some broke motherfuckers up in there. Just, uh, you know, like, th- there's a, co- I guarantee you right now, and I, I've said this in my whole life, like, the baddest race car drivers in the world, like, you don't know them. Like, most of them are probably out in Kannapolis right now racing a wheelbarrow, and they will wreck your ass, you know, and they're fat, but, like, they ain't got a chance. Their parents couldn't even get them a go-kart, okay? Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey. Like, you one hundred and ten percent right. Let me tell you something. The late great Dale Earnhardt Sr. He said to me, "The clear as day." And I use this every once in a while when I'm at racetrack. Earnhardt told me, he "said Hermit." Of course, that's my nickname. He said, "Hermit." There's thousands of great race car drivers out there. Not all of them can be NASCAR. That's so right. You're exactly right. No, yeah. and, I, and I feel yeah. like that's the same with anything. Yeah, so Kenny, I learned a little bit about your. I mean, obviously, I've always followed you. Been you know a huge NASCAR fan, uh, just a huge fan of yours in general for the you know the things you do with the the local dirt racing and racing at the local level, and you do that crazy race that's like a million laps every year. Um, yeah. So and but Get ready to do it next week. Oh yeah, and so you know I I, I when you went on Dale Junior download, I learned more about. And that was a great, great episode, by the way. Yeah, but, but he I, stepped it up since Dale Jr. Downland. He's oh, on bench racing. Come oh, I know. But I, I learned more about <laughs> how... <laughs> this ain't no bullshit. I, I learned more about how, you know, you became to, you know, where you were. You know, how you were a cup crew chief at like 18 for Rusty. And, you know, you, know, you really... People think that, you know, you just got everything handed to you because you were Rusty's little brother. But, you know, you really paid your dues and you know, change tires and, and, and crew chief. And we really didn't know what in the hell you were, you were calling or crew chief. And so, but yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Because, you know, like I said, um, you know, a lot of people, and that kind of ties back into the money thing. A lot of people think that, you know, you just made it there because of rusty, but you're one of the ones that, that, that paid your dues to get to where you got, you know? Well, my brother Rusty said, you know, there's a handful of people that I admire, you know, uh, my dad, my brother Rusty, uh, the late great Dick Trickle. Hell yeah! Uh, but but Rus- Rusty told me this, and it's a quote Rusty said to me. He didn't know he was saying it, but he looked at me and said, "Herm, it's sad to say, you got to remind people because people remember what they want to." So when when Dale Jr. asked me to come on that download, he did it all, and and I listen he. You know, I, it was really nice to have that one last shot to have at the end of my career because that was all Dale Jr. I mean, that kid, you know, he knew me. And, you know, it's it, it just, it just he told everybody about me, and then I just told him the story. So I'm going to tell you what, he truly did. Uh, he, you know, my God, if I, it, it was unbelievable. I'm how good he did for me because of what you just said. It it, it, it slowed a lot of it slowed the roll down. A lot of people and I can't name Kenny Wallace. He, you know, and then when Junior says it all, oh, damn, you know, so he really helped me. He really did. So thanks for saying that. Yeah, no, I um I, I, I wanted to throw this out there because I actually saw a picture that you posted a couple of days ago of you and one of my all time I mean my all time biggest like my guy is Schrader, and I saw a picture you yeah. posted a couple days ago of you and Schrader sitting in between sitting in between two trailers sitting on a cooler. So, Florida, g- Kentucky. Give yep. us give us a good Schrader story because we know Schrader likes to get down. We know you like to get down. Schrader will have a beer with you. Yeah, give us a good Schrader story. <laughs> Come on, have- Herm. Well, well, you got to remember now. I've known Ken Schrader since. I come out my mama's womb. So, I mean, you know, Schrader called the I mean, snap. You know, she, yeah, right. Well, so, so Kenny Schrader's not a friend. He's a, he's a brother. You know, we, we grew up, uh, my brother, Rusty Wallace, and I always say that just so people know who the hell I'm talking about. I guess that's the reason I say Rusty Wallace, I did, 
Well, hang on. Now that social media is taking over, he is now Kenny Wallace's brother. I just want to let you know that because you kick his <laughs> ass on social media. Well, you know, that, hey, you remember, you know, Kenny Wallace's brother won a cup title? Huh? I heard about that. Anyways, go ahead. Well, uh, well no, you know, I forgot what the hell I was saying. Yeah, I got, My you bad. got me in the left my bad. The left the panel. Slide sorry, job. Uh, no, no, you, you did. But no, getting back to the main point, Kenny Schrader, uh, you know, my brother Rusty and Schrader, they were rivals, friends but rivals. They wanted to outrun each other. Uh, so Schrader, you know, he, he's enormously good to me. And, uh, you know, he, he is just, you know, if we were just talking the other day, he said, you remember Herman? He says, you know, you have, uh, you, you gotta, you gotta screw your friends over because your, your enemies don't want to get close to them. So, <laughs> but he, he, he's, uh, man, I just tell you, I'm just speechless about him because he's so good to me. And, uh, you know what's funny about me and Schrader? As goofy as he is and I am, uh, probably the number one thing he said to me that made me laugh was he, go, he looked at me one day, he goes, Herman, he says, you're so fucked up that you make me feel good about myself. <laughs> so, you, it, 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 in, in other words, I said, I said, Freddie, that's my job. He, 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 he let everybody know how weird I am. You know, hey, man, Wallace is weird. I'm perfect. You know? <laughs> so, you got to have friends like that. That's how I felt about hanging out with Shane Meal. Like, <laughs> I felt like, shit, man, right. I ain't that bad. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, you, that, you know, that has been my job on earth. Ever since I was in grade school, you know, I'd run around acting like I was a race car going down the hallway. <laughs> As a teacher, can I go to the bathroom? You know, every the whole damn school's in their classroom, and I go flying by, you know, the, the classroom door. <laughs> you're you're on the chip. Right? You're on the chip going down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to the bathroom, baby. You know, speak- whatever, either. <laughs> It was my first time in that hallway. I had too much Hey, by the end, by the end of the nine weeks, he left. He laid rubber down. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, so right. talking yeah, about my talking about my buddy Shane Meal. I just learned something when we talked to you a minute ago. Like I didn't. You, you guys were teammates. You said where was this? So George Debedar, uh I was driving the number forty-eight Gould pump car. Uh, and, you know, the, I mean, I know you know it, but I'm going to, I knew it before you. Uh, you know, he, now, hear me out. Don't stop me in this sentence. Let me talk. He, Shane Mill was another Jeff Gordon talent wise. His talent was off the charts. He was such a cocky little son of a bitch around me, and he would piss me off, and I'd say, Shane, you know, he would just, He'd outrun me, and he'd have to remind me I outrun me. And I was being good, but, you know, to this day, I mean, we're friends. Uh, I would try to help him, you know. He, he, I'd, be, I'd follow him at Nashville at the concert track, not the fairground, the big concert track. I'd follow him, and then he's driving a push up off the corner. We get done, and we're kind of debriefing as a team. He's my teammate. I said, Shane, you're too tight. No, I'm not. I'm perfect. But, you know, I you know, little shit like that pissed me off about him, but I'm going to tell you, man, oh man, his talent, uh, he was so good. He was right there with Jeff Gordon. He's too good. I knew it. I knew about it before anybody knew it. And, uh, of course, we all know the story, but, but I love him dearly. I love his dad. I love his brother. Uh, but, yeah, it's, you know, it's just a real, real sad deal that oh, yeah. the, the turn of events. You I know, tried to yeah, emulate. You're right. Yeah, I tried to emulate some of the things I learned when I was, you know, he hired me and I was wrenching on his stuff because, like, that's what I needed to do was bounce around and wrench on stuff so I could afford to go race what I needed to race. And uh, like, we went to Winchester. Like this son of a bitch got there on one set of tires. Come in, we'd put another set of tires. He'd go out and he'd go, "That's the set." And like he'd make two lap and like lap times didn't show anything. And then he'd go out there and then put it down. Yeah, and then like over and and then just could I mean just annihilate the field and it was just like it I watched him and, and I watched Kyle Larson come mm-hmm. into the non wing stuff like at Kokomo hopping in cars he didn't even know what and haul ass and then I had to work with Bloomquist and I put Shane Mule with 
Kyle Larson and Bloom. Like, he was so good. Like, he was just, I, I was like, I, I hated racing because I was like, I'm not going to be that good. Like, that son of a bitch was just so good, and he didn't even know it. You yeah. know what I mean? It pissed you off. Yeah. And then, you know, guys right. like, you know, honest honest folk like me and you, Kenny, you want to go out there and we, we work our ass off, and then some, <laughs> you know, some slick, slick dick comes riding in there and goes out there and two tenths better. And I'm like, what the hell was that guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, here's the, yeah, he, here's, here's the, his talent. The reason I compared him to Jeff Ford is because, you know, obviously, I mean, you, you're a racer, but but with me, I mean, now, you know, I'm, you know, I mean, I ran 905 NASCAR races, so the count the 905, right? So <laughs> I've, I've watched a lot of races, dirt tracks, you know, I ran super late models, I learned all. His, his, his talent was unique that him and Jeff Gordon had a unique ability how to let off the gas entering the corner. You know, me, me, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm hyperactive, so I'm just charged. I'm, I'm charged in the corner all the damn time, thinking, boy, if I drive in this corner, I'm a, I'm fast. Look, those two, Jeff Gordon and Shane Neal, they knew how to enter that corner. And, you know, and they never charged it. They knew how to let off and not, you know, not get on the brake right away and trail brake on entry. And he could, you know, him and Gordon could really keep that center of the corner speed up and you know these are things that you and i know and oh you know it you just so can't do it you know yeah. and i hate it because like that's how i feel about cody swanson i always tell everybody about cody swanson he's the fastest dude i ever seen off the gas like yeah. he gets off right. the gas and Rolling. drives away from you and you're like well, what the fuck i'm on the right. gas like <laughs> and, like cody swanson yeah. is the fastest guy i've ever seen off the gas and it drives me nuts yeah so anyways let's get back here so now we know you've been modified racing a lot and all this, and I mean, I had the privilege of, of modified, right. yeah, hell yeah, and I've been had the privilege of modified racing with you a time or two there, and then, but I, I noticed late, lately you said you're going to take a break. You, you you backing away from the seat for a little bit, or what's the deal? Well, so what it is is I I get addicted to racing. So if somebody goes, hey, you can run nine out of ten nights. Uh, you know, I'll run the first three nights. And you get a little tired of your buddy. So, hey, man, we're going to run Gap City. You want to go? They're like, hell yeah, you know, I'm going. So, I'm 57 years old. You know, I'm in good shape, but it's getting to where my friends cannot keep up with me. And so, you know, I don't have any help. And then if you want help, you got to pay them. And Kenny Wallace Racing. You know, we're, we're not looking to be bigger. I'm not Kenny Trader, you know. I'm Kenny Law. Love my wife. Got four grandbabies. And I'm going to keep racing hard. But, you know, we ran nine out of ten nights, you know, a month ago. And it just, it's killing me. It's killing my knees. Fuck, I'm hitting my head underneath that race car. You know, <laughs> so I'm driving, I'm driving the truck. And what it is, is you know, the people that have worked for me, they've got older. Now they got kids and they don't have the energy or drive that I have. Tell them I'm ready to go right now, but I can't find anybody around me that has the energy and drive that I have. They're all, you know, I mean, you're all pretty, even to run, to run a damn modified. I mean, you know, these guys are wanting $60,000. You know, like, dude, we're running a dirt modified. For seven hundred to win, back to roll. You know, slow down. Uh, so hey, that, that's what it is. That's what it is. You know. Hey, Bloomquist was trying to come up with an idea to like train kids, and he was like going to get them to pay him. He had this idea. He's like, <laughs> only like, idea. only like Scott's like, well, you, you know what, man? I got an idea. You know, I just, uh, I tell you, I put these kids to work. I'll teach them a thing or two. You know, they give me a little bit of money, and I'm all like, this motherfucker here thinks that people are going to pay him to work, bro. Hey. Bro, hey Scott, I'm gonna well, tell you. I won so much. Well, hell yeah, but I was like Scott. They already. Think, I was like Scott. They already think you're smoking dope, man. You need to chill out. <laughs> like they're. They, like, put, they put people in jail for for that time. I was like, think of, child labor. Yeah, law. I was like, I don't, I don't think. I was like, maybe buy them a pit pass and throw them a t-shirt, but don't get them to pay you. Scott's like, son of a bitch, I think they'll pay me. You know, I was like, <laughs> you know what's fucked up is they might. It's like they might. Right. Hey, listen. It's no lie. You, you, know, you and I know a lot. I know great workers that work for super 
Now listen, they'll, they'll spend. Now Brian Shirley has spent sixty thousand dollars on a motor, but man it just has a problem paying us you know three hundred a week, and that's what most of those guys make. They all make. Yeah, and that's 50, messed up. Though it's like it, you need to pay you one or two good guys, like to do. I mean, I. I hung out with Scott for about a year, year and a half. And I was just watching and like, I was temporary, but I watched some of these guys and I'm like, I, I mean, to do what some of these guys are doing, like, yeah, but they'll, like I said, they'll pay 60 grand for a motor, but they won't pay a, a guy 30 grand to make that motor run all year. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know about that. That's, yeah, and that's, that's real. Like, yeah, no, that's but, not, yeah. But that's some of those guys that buy a 60, 70, $80,000 race car and then wear a hundred dollar helmet. It's the same shit. I'm like, right. hey, like, hey, come on, bud. Like, use your head here. Like it, to me, you got. I mean, you get in what you put out. But like the modified deal, like what I hate so much, so much is like you go to Winter Nationals at Volusia and they get you know fifty, sixty late models. They'll have damn ninety, eighty modifieds. Y'all racing for eight hundred bucks, yeah, like a thousand bucks. And I'm like, this is fucking robbery here. Like yeah. how, they're paying yeah. ten grand for the late models, but then you got to go out there and beat Nick Hoffman and Kyle Strickler, and you got to. Like you got to run a damn cup team to win a late model race, or I mean a modified race at, at Volusia, and, and then the main night I'll pay fifteen hundred bucks. I'm like, shit, that ain't even a set of tires. This is bullshit. Well, the the main night at East Bay pays five grand, but it pays the first two nights. I think it's a thousand, and then it's fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred, and then it's like five thousand for the last night. But I mean, you know, we run that every year in the modifieds, and uh. Kenny, obviously you don't know this, but I, I help a guy every year, a local guy at East Bay, and we run the Modified Nationals. And, you know, for us to go out there for that kind of money, it, you know, it's – but it's 20 minutes from the house. I don't see how these guys come down from Illinois and all these places to come run. And then when the Lucas Oil cars show up two weeks later, they got half the field but double the purse. But we're running against, you know, you got the local guys that? like – but for real, why? I mean, I don't know. I mean, you think about this. You got the local guys like Jeff Matthews, Bernhardt, just the local East Bay guys that are going to be fast every night. And then you got Strickler, Hoffman. You got all these guys coming down. Yeah, Bronson put the modified out there. Hey, Kenny Wallace would be there. Yeah, Kenny Wallace would be there in the no, old Jeff like, Matthews but, 33. But why do you think that is, Kenny? Why do you think the modifieds get shunned like this? Because... It is a it, it is a lower series, uh, and, and because they well now like my modified it cost me sixty five thousand dollars total. So my motor I spent I just paid more than twenty five thousand five hundred dollars for a motor. The car, no matter what you say, the car I mean I, I buy it right. I pay pay no one bills. So twenty you know right at thirty thousand for the car. So you know uh, they're they're just cheap is the reason and. Why? Now, listen, I own a racetrack, right? Me, Tony Stewart, Kenny Shader. So I want a promotion site. It's kind of like what the IMCA promoters say. Why would we pay you more when so many of you show up? We're mm. a bunch of fucking idiots. Right. And, you know, we just, we just, the, bar, the modified, here, listen, let, let, me, let me tell you real quick. I went in 2005, I went to the prelude to the dream. And I won the race mm-hmm. in a DJ River Super Late Model. That's that's the moment I got into dirt racing. I started dirt racing at forty one years old. My dad ran a so, CJ Rayburn car. <laughs> right. So I ran a Rayburn car. It was a cantilever, right? For spring was like anyway, I went the race. Tony Stewart was second, another dude, his third, a you know, and then and then Schrader and, and Bill Elliott and Tony comes to Victor Lane, he looks at me and goes, what the hell was that all about? I said, oh, that clue, I said, that car all that. Because I, I had already ever land there. Right. But, so, so I get straighter. Now, this is a story if I'm out of five. I'm with him. So, I get 50 grand from Jake. And I say, hey, Schrader, I don't have a tool in my toolbox for a, a dirt super late model. But CJ Raven just come to me and said, Herman, I just think what you did is awesome. I want to let you use a brand new Raven car. I said, fucking right. So he gives me a brand new Raven car. I get a motor from uh, Eddie Petroff, right here in town. Petroff, no sponsor, uh, Boomer. 
So that truck is you know, like 20 miles from my house. Mm -hmm. So he, he puts the motor in, and I gave Schrader $5,000 a race to take care of my Super Late model. In 2007, I go down to Cleveland, Tennessee, and I beat Brian Johnson and all those guys. Mm. I win. So, so I started out in Super Late models, and I won. And, and what happened? I was 41 years old, right? And I got to be like 42, 43. And I started talking to my buddies in St. Louis, and they're like, Herm, you need to run this modified. You know? And I said, tell me about this modified. So I, I told Schrader, I said, look, I'm done running these super late models. I'm not, I'm not starting a career here. You know, I'm, I'm already, you know, hell, I'm three quarters away through my cup career, right? right. So the reason, the reason I run a modified is because it's, even though they're expensive, they fit my pocketbook, and they fit everybody else's pocketbook. Then modified to like ants. They're they're they come out of the woodwork. They're everywhere because they are affordable. And you know you're going to have everybody go. Oh, modified, they're expensive. Let me tell you something. Do you think modified are expensive? I talked to Brian Shelley, and I said, Brian, I said I want to be bullshit something here. Tell me what you pay for your Chevrolet eight mile motor. And he's got one of those four motors. He said, 60 grand. I said, no, like 52, right? He said, no. We write a check for 66 zero. I said, holy shit. How do you, how do, you do it? He goes, I don't. He said, I got an awesome car owner. So that, that's the deal with the mods. Mods are affordable, and it's almost like people only give a shit what we get paid because we can afford them. And that's the deal. Yeah. So. Kenny, that ties back into something, <clears throat> and I said this on the first show that we ever did. We're on, like, episode, what, 11 now, I yeah. think? And the first episode yep. that you ever that we ever did, not long before that, you had put out a video. And the video, it, it was something about, you know, parents message you on Twitter or, or, or tweet at you and say, I want to put my kid in I, my kids in a legend yeah. and I want to put my kid in a late model, what I do? but I can't afford it. And your words were as long as you're racing brother. And that you said that. And I said that on the show. He did. That's right. I do remember that. And I literally like Herm, when you put that out there, that video, I was trying to run above what I could afford. And I am not Eagle. bullshitting you. When I right, saw that man, video, I sold what I had and moved back down to what I could afford because of your video. And that Good is no you. lie. That son of a bitch, he's right. Good he did you, do brother. that. Yeah, well, I can't afford shit. Like. I just drive. If, if, if car well, owners run out, I'm done. Well, I I get my ass chewed out on a weekly basis. Kenny Wallace, you got all that NASCAR money and all those sponsors. Why don't you run a super light model? And I'm like, you dumb son of a bitch. I did. Educate yourself. That's why I run modified. You know, once again, I'm not starting a career here. I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. Uh, listen, I won more fucking modified races than you can count. You know, I've won all the big ones. You know, I mean, I've won three out of seven at Volusia. I've won, you know, I've won some big races at East Bay. Uh, I've won Eldora. I've won Terre Haute. I want gas and blue. You know, I want all in damn traffic. But, but the bottom line is, I run the mod because I can afford it. And I, and I like what you said to me. You know, listen, you know, Troy, when I met you, uh, I didn't bring my mod down there. You know, Jeff, Jeff Matthew says, I'm driving my mod home. Right. So I come down there, I'm running like a bunch of shit. And I look at you, I said, help me, so I don't even know who you are, but, you know, help me. I'm, I'm just down here in my pickup truck. I didn't know what the fuck I was that? doing. So, yeah, you know, well, you know, you know. No, we that night we ran second. I remember I was telling Brian the story. I was like, "Hey, man, what if we uh, put this shock on the left rear?" And he's like, "Well, that'll take like thirteen turns." And then like you're like, "Hey, I'm gonna hop in. Y'all do that shit." And I was like, uh, <laughs> "And I was like, uh, this guy's fucking it's crazy." I was like, "This guy's fucking crazy because I don't know." Hey, we did it. We ran second, and I was like, "Well, shit." Well, yep. And you know, you know what? Uh, getting back to what you guys are talking about. And I want to clarify what I said because you're 100% right. 
I would have mom and dad come up to me. Here's what they'd say all the time. My kid's eight years old. He's won eight track championships. He's the next step forward. What's our next step? And I always tell him, I said, whatever you do, get in a division you can afford because as soon as you start bitching about money, it's over. Done. you got to run a division. you got to run a division that you can afford because as soon as you go, I can't put a right wing tire on. I don't I don't have the $130. I, I blew a motor. I'm done for the year. Well, you're in the wrong division then. Yeah, no, that's one hundred percent right. If you like, if people start doing right. that, they're like, "Oh," because then they start going to the rules meetings, and they're like, well, "You know, we need to take this series and make it this, and and put crate motors and do that." It's like, no, no, no. This series, down. this series is fine. You need to take your ass to a street stock. Is what you need, and, yeah. and that's not right. being, and that's not being mean to street stock. But like, don't come in here no. and try to change the sprint cars. Don't try to change this. Take your ass down and like, and, and I shit. I can't afford a friggin' snowbox derby car, and that thing ain't got a fucking motor. Like I, 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 I ain't got shit. Okay, like I said, when car owners stop, I stop. Okay, yeah. that's it. But the deal is, right. it's like quit trying to downplay a, 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 you know, a series and like bring it down, bring yourself to where you belong. Yeah, and then that there's no shame right. in that. Like, dude, you you go to Anderson Speedway for figure eights. There is a dude there that will whip right. your ass. You go to yeah, you, know, you go to Jennerstown. There's a front wheel drive guy that will whip your ass because that's what he does. Yeah. yeah, and it's like what you need to do is go be the baddest guy in your realm. Yeah, and then when you were the baddest guy in your realm, maybe you get a chance to you know some guy in Oakville modified goes, hey man, why don't you come over here and drive my shit? Yeah, and, and then you know you win that. And then somebody like that's the only way, and that still happens. People say it's extinct, and if you, oh, if you ain't got money, you can't do. It. I can tell you this: Kyle Larson didn't grow up with money. Yeah, Christopher Bell didn't grow up with money. I watched those two dudes You're right. whip their ass all the way to Cup. I watched it. Yeah. Like I seen it recently. I like. Yeah, I really like what you said. I'm gonna use that. Quit trying to dumb your series down. Dumb yourself down. Right. Don't go down. Quit trying to take the whole damn series down with you. Well, that's what people want to do is they're coming to ours. They're like, yeah. Yeah, they're like, hey, we want to put a weight rule and a motor rule and this and that. It's like, no. We don't need soccer moms and sprint cars. We don't need that shit. Take your ass over here and run that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't try to slow. That's why, like, track records aren't following and stuff. Well, because now we got our damn sprint cars weighing 1,550 pounds. Like, And what are they used to weigh? Dude, my sprint car right now has 220 pounds of lead on it. Like, mm. and if I wow. wasn't, a, and if I wasn't 185 Eight. pounds, you know, pure muscle, like <laughs> my car would weigh about That's 13, right. Lean machine <laughs> dude, call it. my car would weigh 1300 <laughs> pounds. Okay. On yeah. pavement. Yeah. And, and her, and we got a, a, my car owner, we got a couple of cars. We're about to have, you got to come run one sometime. Like I told Bronson no the way. same thing. You need to, I, I had, uh, I had Kyle Larson at New Smyrna. We won one night and he, I go, Hey man, you want to run a wing car? He's like, fuck that. <laughs> and I'm like, no. Well, we, hey, hey, listen. I truly believe that every driver knows their element. You know, so I don't have any business being in those cars. You know, I admire you for what you're doing. You got to have a knack. You got to feel. I, I couldn't. I got in a wing car one day and I was all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> On pavement, they're awesome. You guys grew up with that. Hey, but Kenny, you grew I'm, up with, you know what you're doing. Uh, Kenny, I know this is kind of kind of far out, uh, and I know that you just I saw on Facebook because I watch all your videos, man. I know you just sold your car Thanks, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. But yep. Um, do you got any plans of coming down to East Bay in the winter, or is that too far out to know? Or what what do you think there? You know, let me let me tell you about East Bay, and this is the honest to God truth. I literally I literally love the owners down there. Okay, now I know Jeff Matthews and. His wife, they own the track, and then, um, but the guys that run the race track right now, I forgot their name. Al uh, Vondor. They, uh, Al, yeah, Al. They are wonderful people. But I'll just be honest with you, something changed. Man, I used to come down there religiously. And my God, we have the time of our life. And then it just slowly, year after year, uh, you know, it just all quit being fun. And, and I, you know, I told Al, I said, Al, where in the hell did you get the dirt that you just put on his track? I, I can't stand that slime. That's, that's, what, that's what ruined it for me. When you put that slime on there, and I spent all the practice, all the heat races, 
until the track was cleaned up for the monocles to out put too much water on it. See, I'm a lot older than you. East Bay used to have normal dirt on it. Oh, yeah. And, it used to know, build a curb. It, it had a cushion, man. And, you know, you could run, you could roll the bottom. You could put it on the cushion. And then Al went and got dirt. I have no idea where he got that dirt from. But I cannot stand it. Now, the late model dirt cars are big enough. They'll, they'll get it cleaned up, and it all goes good. But for these little 8-inch mod cars, I just, it just, I, no, you you're right. Know, I you're right. And, that's a fact. I mean, it, it sucks ass, nuts. but it's a fact. It's like some nasty, like slimy, like gumbo clay. Like it's just it ain't, it ain't yeah. like nothing else. Fine. But, but uh, yeah, if you need, if you need, if you go over to Volusia or something, you need somebody to scrape some mud, Herm. I'll, I'll ease up to Volusia. I could scrape mud like a son of a bitch. You're you're too important to do that, buddy. Not, nah, bro. I I'm a mud <laughs> scraping son. Of, I'm gonna tell you right now, that'd be the cleanest race car you ever had. <laughs> Hey, listen, Herm, my guy runs East Bay Nationals, but we don't travel after that So, because he can't get off work usually. So, hey, man, if you need a mud scraper at Volusia, I'm here. I can put a mud plug in real I good. <laughs> I, I, um, I, uh, I cherish my Winter Nationals Day, you know, uh, a lot of my trophies. And I have them in my shop, you know, and I made a big deal about trophies. They're great memories. But, you know, we, we come down there and it'd be me. My current chief bill is paying forty thousand a year, gave me money for insurance, took care of all of his expenses, had Billy. Because me, Billy, and I'm you know, I'm doing T V and running cover and but me, Billy, it was a Toby, Blake, Don, there was like five of them. And buddy, we come down and we go directly to East Bay, run like I don't know, five nights down there, and we go East Bay. But back up 75, we go to Ocala. And Fort Bubble was unlucky. It rained out every damn time we tried to run there. Uh, then we'd go from Ocala up to, you know, Lake City, Florida, North Florida, Speedway. Oh, hell yeah. Then to Volusia. So, buddy, we, we'd come down there with two race cars, 52, 55 gallon drums of fuel, motors. I mean, when our shit left St. Louis, the axles and the trailer were flexing. And we made memories that for a lifetime. Billy, who doesn't work for him anymore, uh, but we're lovers. We're, we're buddies. And uh, I told Billy, I said, Billy, I don't have a 401k for you. you got to leave me because I care about you too much. We made the greatest memories at East Bay. And uh, oh my God, we had so much fun down there. But then, then days are over, sadly. You know, uh, life goes on. Well, Kenny, let me ask you something else about some days that are that have gone by, and it's something that I've always been interested in. Um, obviously, I'm sitting here in front of a camera doing this podcast, but tell us about the the, the Fox Sports, the the FS1. Tell us about the TV life, the Speed Channel, the track side. I mean, just just c- kind of give us the gist of what you thought about the the TV deal. Well, TV found me. They called me up, and wanted to know if I would start out on you know with. When Fox originally started, like, you know, you guys were maybe not born. You were babies. Uh, but they used to be ABC, CBS, and NBC, and that was it. And then Fox, if you, if you Google when did Fox Sports start, hell, it was in the 90s. So uh, Fox decided to, you know, come to NASCAR. Well, the executive, Ed Gordon, which was the president of Fox Sports, I was 36 years old. He called me up, got a hold of me, and wanted me to be part of the original broadcast. And, oh, man, my heart started pounding, offered me $500,000, and then told me that there'd be more money from our friends, quote-unquote, at NBC. And, oh, my God, after months, he told me, you know, how he long quit playing for the Oakland you know, uh, you know, the Oakland Raiders. And it took, he, he gave me about three months. And I finally calmed it down. I said, I just can't do it. I'm a rich. Well, then so many years later, I called him up and I said, hey, I, I remember that I was in the Chicago airport and I said, I'm ready. And it just crushed me. You know, I, you know I, I wanted to be Jeff Gordon. That's who I wanted to be. And then when I realized I didn't have the talent, it was a crushing blow. You know, it devastated me. So he said, okay, let's start out. Let's teach your rough So let's go to speed TV. So I didn't miss, but I passed up 
my opportunity to go to network right away. Uh, now, I can tell you there's a huge difference between network Hell and yeah. speed, but, but, the, but the great thing about speed, man, is they let me do anything. Shit, man, I, and I'm learning in the cup here, right? I'm, I'm, I'm the first driver to burn to road. You know, and I can wake up and I do the show. And, and, and then I get in the cup car and race. <laughs> so, TV was wonderful for me. It gave me a it, it extended my career probably 15 more years. They were awesome. I loved it. And then when I retired in 2015 from NASCAR racing, and they said, okay, you're full-time TV, that's when it turned to shit. Because when, when see, when, when, when I didn't need them, they let me do anything I wanted. But when they realized I was an employee, that sucked. Right. Because then they started bossing me around. Then, then it was like, hey, Kenny, can we? Talk? They were nice. They were very nice to me. They weren't mean. But it was shit like this. Hey, Kenny, can we talk to you? Yeah. We noticed that. You know, I, I'm an English major. They were Craddock, and he's my buddy. He's Craddock. But, but it was stupid shit. Like, I'm at Martinsville. And now I'm already 90% into my TV career. I'm already Kenny Wallace. You know, you're not going to make me any better. And, and and he's like, I noticed that you used the word saw and seen wrong. And here's a piece of paper. You know, it's just me. It aggravates me. I'm like, oh, Jesus. You know. So I love the TV from the perspective that it was. It, it extended my career. The sponsors loved me. I took that sponsorship. Listen, the reason I kept doing TV is because I'm a racer. And it's like Roger Pimpsey taught me. Roger, I heard Rusty. I heard, I heard Roger Pimpsey tell Rusty one day, we don't race unless we got a sponsor. I stayed doing TV because the sponsors would sponsor my race car. Right? You know, so that's the reason I kept doing TV. And then, it, you know, it made me popular. And how I could sell products. But then at the very end, the reason I quit was, you know, I'll never forget it. I still got the letter in my email, right? You know, I hit it, and I got it still. I, I texted Craddock. I said, Steve, you know, I've, I've, I've been with Fox Sports 15 wonderful years, and you guys have been great to me, but it's, it's time for me to call it, call it a career, and I need you to make this easy on me. And so we met at Morton Steakhouse in Richmond, Virginia. I fucking love and Morton's. And he said, what is it? Yeah, what's this crazy thing you're talking about? So, you know, that was it. And I just I just said I had enough. I got tired of the travel. Kim didn't go with me anymore. And it, it was no fun. And that's that. But, you know, it was good. It was great. And then I was done. And then that was right about the time where you, you know, grandbabies were showing up and, and all that stuff, too. So you wanted to be at home more, too. I mean, I, obviously, I mean, I know, you know, what you just explained about the TV deal. But, you know, as the grandbabies start showing up, you don't want to be on the road as much. And, and, and things like that, I'm sure, factored into it, too, right? I won't be as long-winded as I was last time. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, just, say it, I'll just say it like this. Here's the deal. I'm a racist. I love my kids. I love my grandbabies, but I'm going to go racing. And my right. family's not going to stop. That's They're right. not going to stop me because they know the money that I made puts the food on the table. My family never says race car up. They don't do that shit to me. No, that's not the reason I quit TV with grandbabies. The reason I quit TV is because they to go the racing. God, God's truth. I would be late up in that fucking hotel room on a Friday or Saturday night. Seven eight o'clock, and I get on Twitter or Facebook, and my buddies were running dirt on the quarter mile dirt track, paying seven hundred to win, and that's what I wanted to be. I got tired of going to that commercial airport, getting on that fucking stupid ass the cow machine, you know, moon, you know, the herd that's on the airplane, you know, like my cows, no, you know, weird. getting on that damn, sh getting on that shuttle bus. Get in the dumbass rental car, going into that hotel room all by myself every night for a little bit of TV time, and and that was it. That is the reason I quit TV because I wanted to go dirt racing. I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to 
That's from bad. Peoria, ass. Illinois. For, I want to make Peoria, it. Illinois for seven seven hundred dollars. That's the truth. That's awesome, dude. That is bad at like, <laughs> and that's what I kind of like. The more I've learned about Kenny in the, in the time, is just like now busted his ass, worked his way, but kind of from racing to TV to post, you know, to his own racing modified to now, like it's all. It, and right now, when you're like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna take a break," like yeah. it's all it's all been on your terms, and I kind of dig that. And like, because I I've never got to do remotely what you got to do but like i do pride myself on like i've always raced my own way you know what i mean yeah. and like i'm and i'm and i'm forever gonna do it my way and like there's guys like kenny who have raced on you know the highest of levels got to do the bad i mean got to push dale senior to his final win i got to do some badass shit got to win some modified races that you wish you could make the field in you know and then like got to duck out when he wants race when you want and that, that that's that to me that's making it is yeah. when you get to do what the well, fuck you want to do that's making it well I, I and you made that. it kenny let me well see, that's nice you saying i really appreciate it i want to let you know something i've always known that i'm a c plus b minus talent but that ain't the point the point is i'm gonna fucking race okay you know i'm allowed to race not everybody's Jeff Gordon, and and you know, I'm a racer, so I want to race. And I did, I did all that stuff because I knew that I needed the bank. Well, here, let's fast forward. The, the reason I sold all my shit is because I needed to change chassis makers. Uh, in, in three weeks, going up at the Rhythm, and I dropped a valve. And I got lucky the valve didn't go through the pit. This is three weeks ago, okay? Mm-hmm. So, I'm real frugal with my money. So, it was like, okay, I had a guy parked right next to me at Spoon, and he wanted to buy my car. He knew it was Mercedes, because I'll buy your car tomorrow. I just got done dropping a valve, and I got lucky. It didn't go through the system. It, it, it stuck in my shop bill letter, you know, and, and I'm like, oh, shit, okay, I can go back to the shop, take the motor out, take it to Mullen, get the head fixed, or I can take the motor out, sell the car, and... You know, I gave I, you know, I took and gave a lot of money to Nick Hoffman. I got my, my car over here in two three weeks, but you know, I could have kept running on Polly Red and then not sold it. So the, you know, there's a couple of reasons I just got done taking a break and I did that video. I was tired, physically tired, because I'm doing everything myself and I'm not bitching about it. No, I'm not. You know, racing too much, racing too much. So, so my car will be here. My new car will be here in two weeks. You know, I won a couple of races, and it, it hurts like hell. Tonight they're running my mania right now, and uh, good thing I'm doing this show or else I'd be all over it right now. So, mm-hmm. hey. you know, that, that, that's some truthism, you know, so that's that. Kenny, we got this thing that we say on the show, and we started it in the first episode, and we like to have guys on that are just like, Got racers. Got this. Hey, I got this from Bloomquist. Hey, and he got this from Bloomquist. You know what we call it? It's the sickness. The what? sickness. Got, hey, I remember when I yeah. when I first met Scott, and we were talking about my buddy oh. Cody, who is his crew chief, who's now Owen's crew chief. <clears throat> and he goes, "Hey, boy," like we were at PRI, and he goes, "Cody, Cody says you got the sickness," and I was like, "Nah, I don't, I don't know." What, uh, you talking about A's? I don't know. No, I feel really like, good. Yeah, like, yeah, no, <laughs> no, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go, Scott. I, 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 I'll be there February, baby. I'm ready. And he's like, nah, man, Cody, that boy, he works eight days a week, 25 hours a day. He's got the sickness. He's like, Cody says, you got the sickness. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got that. I got that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nah, because if you mean like give up every fucking thing there is in the whole world and an only rate, yeah, yeah, no, I got that. You mean... Yeah. Like, cause there's times I've been sitting on the grid, like, damn man, I should have stayed in school. I'm wait, God, every all my teachers said I had potential, and instead I'm sitting here, fucking broke, racing. This <laughs> it's called the sickness. But yeah. Hey, Kenny Wallace got the sickness. sickness. Kenny Wallace got the sickness. Hey, he's got that Scott Bloomquist sickness. <laughs> now, what, hey, what I'm gonna do next year is I'm gonna right side. So I sold my Freightliner tractor, my double stacker. I went and bought it. I sold that stuff, got good money for it. I, got, I had the right side, not downside, right side. That's right. Where I, 
you know, nobody helped me drive a truck because they didn't have a class A driver's license. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm leaving St. Louis driving all the way to Florida by myself while they're watching me because they're afraid to drive it, you know. So I said, all right. I bought a brand new Ford F-450. Those some bitches are badass to them. And that's incredible. what my car owners got. We tell our insect with Yeah, they're, dude, they're incredible. They got more power than my freight liner tractor. It's unreal. No, that thing totes, and, man. And bought, oh, it does. I bought a brand new set of lights. And look, I got one race car, one motor. And the new me is this. I'm going to run 50 dirt races next year. But I'm going to run two or three races a week. I'm not going to go nine out of ten, you know. And I just, that's the way I got to operate now. No know? more hell to her. Uh, I, I, I can't do the sickness thing like you're saying. <laughs> no, nah, you still go got it because you're going to you be 58 plus running 50 races. You, hey, you and Schrader got uh, the sickness. You uh, can't get rid of your terminal, motherfucker. Uh, you're terminal. <laughs> yeah. hey. All right. Well, listen, boys. Um, I love y'all with this. This was great. Time. No, this was way longer than we thought. We really appreciate it. Yeah, this. you filled up the whole show. We don't even got to talk anymore. Yeah, we're just going to do an <laughs> well, intro and outro. You. you got it. I need, I needed you guys. And thanks for the, you know, when I did that Dale Jr. podcast, you, you reminded us how great I was. I said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? That's the second person in a row. Shane Mill said, he goes, I needed this when he came on. Hey, you know, that's what we're here for. We just want to have a little, few little drinks, talk a little bench racing. Therapy session. Therapy, Therapy, baby. That's what it is. Hey, we're here for the, hey, because you got the sickness. Well, we're we here to treat sickness. the different. <laughs> well, listen, you guys are wonderful people. And Troy, I mean, it's the bottom of home. You are rarely the vision because your talent is off the charts. You know, it's, I mean, when I, when I look out there, when I watch how talented you are, I'm like, why the fuck? You got cup. You uh, know, you're that good. But, I appreciate listen, it. You're a wonderful soul. Keep being you, brother. Thank you, man. Hey, Herm, that means a lot. It really does, man. I appreciate it. What's well, true, man? I know. And me and Brian here, Nobody. like, I'll tell you what, we keep getting steady better with this show. And we'll have, you better share this shit on Twitter, Herm. <laughs> I ain't fucking. Hey. You need like a Joe Rogan, man. You get that million dollars. Hey, that's what we're going to make <laughs> it. Th- we're going to make it this way, baby. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it goes I up on you. I said, who the fuck is Joe Rogan? What do you do? All right, here. <laughs> Boxer, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God, give me one of them <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, man. We, we, hey, we'll post it on Twitter. Or, uh, we'll God post it damn. on YouTube, and then we'll make sure that Troy texts it to you or whatever. Um, hey, man, we appreciate it. Hey, truly, from the bottom of my heart, man, it's been an honor. Uh, I've I've watched you since the uh, the square the, D. No, before that, baby, oh, the red dog, the red dog for Thunderbird days when you was a baby. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hey, man, I got a hero. I got a hero card book at the house, and I've got a red dog card in there signed. I've by I've never you, seen so. it. Every picture I've ever seen of Kenny Wallace, he's smiling. And I like that shit. I love it. Hey, Herm, we appreciate it, man. Have a good night. Uh, this is this has been awesome, man. Like I said, it's truly been an honor. Uh, and uh, hopefully, we'll talk to you again in the future. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for coming to do this for me, Herm. I love you, buddy. Hey, don't let me go. Bye. You know, I don't like to give you props on anything. Like, if you set a fast time by two seconds, I'm like, mm, you fucking suck. <laughs> but you set that up. What's that? Herm. Oh, yeah. No, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you said that. <laughs> oh, at first I didn't know what we were talking about. Yeah. No, I've you, been drinking. You, <laughs> <laughs> no, you set, you set Herm up. No, I called him a favor. No, that was awesome. I No, I, he, he delivered. Yeah, he did. That's what he, hey, that's what he does, man. I'm telling you. He just said, hey, I was like, hey, man, before you get famous, like, <laughs> you want to do our show? And it, like, without hesitation. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, it's good. that's how he's been to me since I've met him. Like, yeah. And people can say what they want about certain people. But since my experience with Kenny, guys, they won. And, you know, not to keep harping on this, but to me, it just really, 
the whole reason we started the show was because obviously, you know, we, we like doing this, blah, 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 blah. But I had a, I, I love Dell Junior Download. And I had a vision of doing it smaller, oh, smaller scale, obviously. But then, you know, Kenny Wallace is on Dell Junior Download not that long ago, a couple of months ago. Mm-hmm. And then that son of a bitch is just on our show. I mean, I didn't even look at Dale Jr. down low. I thought that's what we was. I, th- I thought that was competition. I, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what you was talking about. I was like, I mean, I ain't even trying to be them. I, no, I, I, well, I, I mean, we, as soon they're going to be like, are these motherfuckers passing us? <laughs> like, that's what I thought. Yeah. But that's up to you. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, their spotters are going to be like, uh, uh, hey, bench racing quarter. You, you, bench, you got a car, you got a car low. Bench, car racing, low. bench racing door. Oh, shit. Bench racing just blew your fucking doors off. Uh, hey, and it starts with Kenny Wallace. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we did. And then next thing you know, slide job. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know the buttons. Yeah, no. Slide job. Yeah, there you go. Hey, so. Bro, I'm trying to set you up for everything. That's no. what I'm doing. I'm. A, I'm basically John Stockton. <laughs> yeah. we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna throw a slider on Dale Jr. Yeah, I mean it's it's slow. It's like, and you know he, I, we expect him to cross us over. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> they're probably gonna they're probably gonna cross us over. You know, throw like a Richard Petty in there or some shit. But it's okay. Hey, but see the 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 thing is, Dale Jr. They do a show every week. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> consistency is key. We ain't very uh, good with the planning. No, no, but you know, but when we come out though, we hammer down. Yeah, we we'll hammer down. We might be in the pits for you know thirty, forty seconds, <laughs> but then when we come out, we'll get. Hey, we'll, we don't even need a lucky dog. We're like it's kind of like what Kenny said. He said, "I'm not gonna run nine out of ten nights. I'm gonna run three out of ten. Well, here at bench racing, we run about one out of thirty. Hey, <laughs> but when we show ba- up, hey, when the bench racing trailer rolls in the pitch, you better recognize. That's what I'm saying. We're trying to beat the Kyle Larson of fucking <laughs> of downloads here or whatever. And, and you know, we'll we'll get better. And we don't have no cool fancy table or or you know uh, a legendary father. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. we're we're doing the best we can with what we got. And I can tell you this: there ain't no way. That I thought in eleven episodes that we'd have the shit we had rolling. I'll be honest with you. When you came to me with this, the first two episodes I thought were a fucking joke. <laughs> you know, I thought we was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, it turns out we're not. Yeah, and like I mean, <laughs> we got guys winning World of Outlaw races, uh, guys winning Winchester the Snowball Derby unofficially. Uh, <laughs> we got uh, guys that won one of the Bush series, the drug series. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and then we got guys who you're you going to hear about. Michael like, Goddard. Uh, and Colton Bettis. Exactly. Like, I mean, really the only cop we had on here was John Inman. But <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I said it. Hey, anyway. you, you're going to hear about John Inman tomorrow when he uh, outruns your ass at, at Showtime. Uh-huh. Okay. But anyway, so I'm just saying, <laughs> you're welcome, John Inman. And, but every, I mean, like, for a little bit of – you know, uh, basically a Facebook podcast because we didn't, we weren't really big on anything else. Yeah, but like, I mean, we're doing our thing. And you know, every time somebody walks in here, they're like, "Cause this, okay, this is our checkout counter at my store. Like, we take the iPad off and the cash register, <laughs> and we put our deal up here. But every time somebody walks in, they're like, "Damn, I thought it was bigger." I'm like, "No, it's a, like a four I, by th- four. Th- that's <laughs> what she said." <laughs> <laughs> the TV adds 10 pounds. You know? hey, so we're out here doing our thing. I'm just, it, we're just a little podcast that could. And you know what? Chicka, 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 hey, chicka. But I tell you what, I, I appreciate the Kyle Bronsons, you know, the the Stephen Nassies, the, the Kenny Wallaces. I, you know why? They got the sick. They do got the sickness, and we went over that with a lot of. Be- I mean, there's some things that this show I think is really, really bringing to light, and, and it's just good, good shit talking. Some yeah. it's bench racing, and, and it's everything. Like this, this, uh, you know, Steve or Shane Meal. Like our, our our past two shows now have been exactly what. I thought this shit should be. Yes. You know, this yes. isn't this isn't get on here and be like, you know, we're a polo 
and you know thank your sponsors and smile for crest and all the bullshit like this is get up here and talk a little shit like talk your shit yeah and we're not gonna say and finishing 37th last week and Street stocks. No, no. Like, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with finishing 37th at street stocks. The fuck there isn't. We're, the, we're, I can tell you this: you finish 37th at street stocks, you can go home and but, figure out your shit. But we're but not. We're, I, we're not a. Res, we're not a local results show. I mean, I get it, but don't, if you finish 37th at street stocks, you can get your fucking shit together. <laughs> That's all I know. But either hey. way, what I'm the point of this is is like what I love about bench racing is we come on here, you could talk your shit, and, and like if you want to watch. Cool. If you don't, if it ain't for you, cool. Like this, don't need to be a hundred thousand views. It don't. It, it, it'll get as big as it needs to get. Right. And, and I think that's great. Like, and that's why I appreciate guys like Kenny. Like, yeah, I'm sure Kenny's gonna get on here. We're gonna pick up some views. Uh, Shane Mule got here, pick up some views, do some things. But like, bench racing doesn't need to be about. The, it just needs to be about racing, and not the shit you see on TV. It needs to be about. The shit you hear in the shop, the shit you hear at the trailer, the thing you know that's what like, you said. There was something like, "Oh, I, I don't let my little kid watch no more because this ain't a little kid's show." Like this is this is after the checker flag falls. This is at the trailer, bush light up, tools down, and your kid's sleeping in the back seat of the hey, F one fifty. And if that kid's up, he's getting a little bit of education yeah. that he didn't get, you know, at Sunday school. <laughs> right. No, I hear you. Hey, but I cannot let this show end without shouting out. We picked up another sponsor. Oh, shit. So, which is incredible. Incredible. <laughs> like somebody gives us like a, 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 like actual cash or like a cash app or like a PayPal type deal. If you're interested, get with me. I can give you all the links and the usernames to those said apps. But <laughs> he go, but, he go. But I cannot end this show without letting you guys know about the Golden Gate Speedway reunion. Now, the Golden Gate Speedway reunion. I'll be honest. Last year was my first year there. We made some shirts. We sold some shirts at the reunion, and it was a hit. I saw a lot of guys there at the reunion. That big names race at Golden Gate. Yeah, that my uh, guys that my dad grew up watching at Dick Golden Trickle Gate. Dick Trickle has raised at Golden Gate. Yeah, I mean guys that my dad grew up watching at, at there, and uh, you the entire, know, I mean everybody everywhere. who's anybody that's come through Florida. I mean Scarborough, Riddle. I mean they've all. I mean the whole Anderson family, Pletchers. Yeah, like everybody copes. Mike Cope won a race for my and my dad's late. My damn, that might have been Showtime. Shit, but it could. Wanted to get the fact check on that. Yeah. Hey, but either way, Golden Gate Speedway was the premier. Like when pavement racing rolled through, like they ran the fairgrounds when when Speed Weeks was going on for the dirt cars. But they ran Golden Gate. I mean, the Allisons. People have come through Golden Gate, and uh, like my dad's running that deal this year with uh, I think L.J. Grimm's mom and yeah, Miss Linda. Yep. And they're doing it at Captain Jack Noling. Or I, I don't think the the Golden Gate reunion should be anywhere other than the Captain Cracker Jack. House. Yeah, yeah, Captain Jack's. Like, I mean, because Captain Jack's seen them all. They all rolled through there. But, I mean, the deal is is turned into something bigger than I thought it would. Right. And, I, and I mean, uh, this is actually my first one attending. And, I mean, I'm actually ashamed to say that because as big a student of the sport as I am and as big as I am into racing in the Florida region alone, I should have been to more. Right, um, right. Uh, but I'm excited. And at Captain Jack's, like, that's where it needs to be. Right. Well, another thing, too, is this is not set in stone. I'm still waiting on an affirmative from your dad. But word on the street is that the night before the Golden Gate Speedway reunion at East Bay Raceway Park, there's going to be a Legends race. Some old heads like your dad, some other guys. They're gonna, oh, my dad's going to race? I, that's word on the street. They're going to get in the – I don't know if they're going to get in the old-time mods. I don't know if there's guys bringing cars down. Whatever the deal is. Buzzy Rubin going to wear them out. It's, <laughs> I, I just, I'm going to go ahead and say that because that dude's still racing. Yeah. So I don't it, care you bring Will Cagle. I don't care who you 
who else they could bring? I mean, Leroy Porter. I don't, I don't know who else they could get. Dave Pletcher. I mean, maybe maybe Anderson's got a chance. Oh, Wayne Anderson or somebody. But I mean, the over, I'm picking Wayne. Wayne or not? Nah. Damn. They can, bring, they can bring Wayne. No, because I, I, I well, Wayne Rudiman would be my guy. I don't know. Nah, see, a Rudiman will win that. So, <laughs> it, whether it be Wayne or Buzzy, I just, I just, I just stumped myself there. So check this out, though. Rudiman's one two called it. Yeah. So check this out. The Golden Gate deal has always been, I think it's been going for six years now. Yeah, five six yeah. And it's been at. The old, uh, what is it called? Big Top Flea Market or whatever that's uh, called. They had it up in like Bushnell one year. Uh, but the it's, past it's couple. Bounced, yeah, it's bounced around a little bit. Past couple has been at Big Top Flea Market. That's where it was last year. But now that your dad's heading it up. Uh, Damn, that makes me feel bad. They're that's having it at Captain Jack's. Dude, Captain Jack's is the place. Like, that's the place where it needs to be. Racing in Florida goes through Captain Jack's, I feel like. And the night before, I think, I'm telling you right now, I don't. We don't have a hundred percent yet on the East Bay deal the night before. But if that happens, you need to bring your ass. Hey, I'll be there for that shit. Yeah, I don't. I don't even care what they're racing. Yeah, it you could need, be a foot race. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you need to bring wheelchair, your ass. oxygen, the whole deal. I'll be there. You need to bring your ass out to East Bay because we'll have some 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 nice shirts for sale. You know, Golden Golden Gate Speedway reunion, um, and. You know his dad, some other some other older guys will be heading the deal up. But man, these guys like these old heads, man, like they hang on to that. And no, you know, I hang on to that. There's no, what I was gonna say. There's there's nothing wrong with that. And for the younger people to get out there and support something like that, to support something that happened oh, yeah. that was going on before their time i think that's really important for well, you need to know where you came from before you know where you're going yeah oh 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 we're uh, getting deep hey oh my goodness bro i'm dropping I, i'm basically dr a, phil over here a philosopher yeah but i'm just saying like i mean you gotta know who john berg is you yeah i know who randy alvarez is you gotta know who wayne rudiman is. wayne rudiman is senior hold on are you sure it's senior? I'm positive it's senior. What? Junior is still at the baseball park ain't doing shit. That's where I said it. Anyways, so you got to know who Bobby Alexander is. Keith, oh, Keith Nosbitt is still out there wheeling. You got Will Cagle. You know, these guys who who brought that. Sam Rodriguez. Uh, you know, Dave Scarborough. Frank Riddle. I mean, Jim Childers. Gentleman Jim Childers. Jack Arnold. Like, I mean, there's some guys who, if they weren't here, if they didn't do this, you wouldn't be able to be you today right. at, at Showtime, at Auburndale, at Citrus, New Smyrna. Like, like you wouldn't exist if it wasn't for these, what these dudes did. And they did it on a level that, that we, most of us Florida guys can't imagine because they did it when, like, those guys would come down here in February and they'd show out. Those guys come down here now in February, and we get shut up. Yeah, I hate to say it, that's just how it goes. Like, I mean, when the you know when the Bubba Pollards and these guys come down here, like you know, we got some guys like Nasty and Michael Goddard, and these guys hanging tough. But like before, they used to come down here and they used to have to face Murderers Row. Like they used to have to face the Florida boys, and we used to stand tough. And now they couldn't afford to go anywhere else, but they knew when they were coming to Florida, it was going to be a problem. Right, and uh, you know. So, I mean, if you want to learn some shit, take your ass to Captain Jack's or come out to that old old heads race he said. I don't know what's going on. I really don't. But you want to learn some shit, you come out to – you you want to hear some real bench racing? Yeah. You want to hear some real shit? Listen to Joe Melnick at Captain Jack's. Like, you're going to learn something. Give me one second here. I, I'm going to just make sure I get the right date. It is going to be uh, October 17th and 18th. So seventeenth at East Bay, supposedly, and eighteenth yeah, at Captain Cap, Jack. And Captain Jack's out there on Bliss Road in Gibsonton behind the Walmart. <laughs> so hey, you pass I, I don't know the exact address, but you pass the Walmart, go through the roundabout, hit Bliss Road, make a right, and you're gonna land in racing heaven at Captain Jack's house. I mean, there's some big shit that goes on there in Speedweek. So I do yourself a favor. 
Show up at Captain Jack. And and like I said, I'll be honest with you, last year was my first year there and they had like a little stage set up. And this was back at, you know, Big Top Flea Market last year, but they had like a little stage set up and they had some old heads, like they would be walking like literally they'd just be walking through. And they would say, you know, Roger Krause or whatever. Roger Krause. Come up here and talk to us. And they'd go sit on the, on the stage with them. Oh, they have that. And just, I think ben just talk to them. Be there. Son of Don't a, tempt me with a good son time. Son of a bitch. Oh, baby. We just hit on something there. <laughs> son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Hey, Ben Tracy needs to be at this shit. Uh, we got to be there. We'll do it. And we'll I, take you this. Know what? Honestly, I wouldn't be cussing this much, but I don't know if y'all just heard how much Kenny Wallace just cussed. So, like, <laughs> I feel a little free. I'm just out here just, hey. like, just letting it go. But what I feel like is we need to take Ben Tra- We need to take the T-shirt trailer. Maybe a PA. Do we got a PA? Do we got that? Mm-hmm. We're going to get a PA. <laughs> Dwayne. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to get, and we're going to have, bring this thing. That's got to be something. We'll bring that and this. The camera. Hey, we're going to get, you, you tell you, you want to talk about some legends? We're going to talk to Roger Krause. Let's talk, uh, you know, Let's even bring Terry to care on here. I was about to say, I Let's want... Let's bring the Black Flag Bandit. The Black Flag Bandit. I, listen, hey. I want... Listen, I we have... So, this deal right here, we got this, we got these two. We've got two other microphones and two other headsets uh-huh. to go with them. And let me tell you something. I will not go unless I can get the Black Flag, the black flag Bandit, Terry to care, and slamming Sammy Rodriguez... Uh-huh. On here at the same time. We don't even need to be on there. No, we'll just get in the shit. Like, Dude, it'll be good. Hey, you know what? You're welcome that I just came up with that third drink. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but anyways, wrap it up, damn Ford. Wrap uh, it up. Hey. No, we're about to. I, I, that That's, I didn't even think about that. I'll be 100% honest hey, with you. I you're welcome. This is what I do. Yeah. I, I'm the idea he's guy. The, he's the talent. I'm the talent around here. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, we're going to get out of here. Um, uh, we appreciate it. Make sure y'all, you know, like, share, subscribe. Uh, yeah, uh, I at, hope y'all like that episode. If you don't like, I'll tell you this right now. If if you didn't like the Shane Mill episode, I'll give you a mulligan. No. The sh- the last two episodes have been the best two yet, and I, hopefully that trend keeps. Yeah. But I'm just telling you, like, if you're a racer, and, and, and shout out to all of our guests, or giving us exactly what we want. We don't want the cookie cutter. We want the bench racing. We want to talk to you. Yeah. We want to talk to you like this microphone ain't here. Yeah. And so, I love that shit. Yeah. Thank so, you, Kenny Wallace. Thank you, Shane Mio. Thank you, guys. This shit was great. Yeah. So, I mean. I don't give a shit if they don't like it. For me, I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad my kids get to watch this. Oh, no, for sure. And, you know, even if. There's a little piece of something in you that didn't like the Shane Mill interview. Please, please, please watch the episode right here, right now with Kenny Wallace. If you don't like it, don't ever, ever, ever watch one of our yeah, videos no, again. Because no, this shit ain't for you. Like, this shit ain't for you. It ain't for you. This, hey, this was good. And I'm proud of this. I, yeah. I, you know what? I'm proud of us. Yeah. Dang. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> that's it. Wrap it up. Press yeah. the button. Hey, let's go. Hey, listen, man. I appreciate everything. Uh, I'm, at, I'm done. At Bench Racing on uh, fucking uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all that. Uh, make sure you follow us. Uh, appreciate Kenny Wallace coming on. Hopefully, Kenny will retweet this deal and we'll get some views, but that ain't what we're worried about. All we're worried about is Bench Racing. True racers that got the sickness. The sickness.